do you got a second to just do a yeah, quick absolutely. walk around and then I'll, I'll, I'll let you go. Then you go fly. So I'm here in Bentonville, Arkansas. I'm here in a friend's um, beautiful hangar. He's got a he's got an incredible collection of aircraft. Uh, behind me is a P-51 Mustang with the cowl off, doing a little uh, doing a little engine inspection there. You'll see over my right side one of uh, only two in the world Super Corsairs. So this is a double R-2800 up Man. there, which is uh, pretty unbelievable. I'll walk you around the Mustang. I'm just showing you around. Uh, American flag, of course, you got to have that. America. Uh, you got an F8F Bearcat there, which is a really, really beautifully redone and restored uh, aircraft. The Bearcat was almost the last iteration of the prop age, right? So it was one of the fastest airplanes, and they figured out all that technology to keep the yaw out of the aircraft. And again, a big, big, uh, big radial engine. But the one that deserves the uh, the uh, the exotic is the Mark 18 Spitfire. So oh, wow. that's now got uh, the Griffin engine in it. So it's almost a thousand more horsepower than the Merlin. So uh, Rolls Royce named their engines after birds of prey. So you got the Merlin engine in the Mustang and the Griffin. And uh, of course, you always have to have a helicopter. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. So just so you can get around. But no, this is uh, so what can I tell you about the P-51 that you might not know? Uh, the wing lockers will carry uh, a 230 packs of Miller Lite. <laughs> uh, really nicely. So you, uh, you, so this is the ammo trays where you would take take this panel off and you would put your, uh, this is where your bullets were stored and your uh, gun bays, obviously your fuel tank, but they fit uh, modern day when you're cruising around and you need to take beer with you to the air show. <laughs> now the wing lockers, that's one of the, if the panel comes open that you thought I was telling you was open, that's one Yeah, that's a bad day. You're hopping out? Yeah. Yeah, oh. jumping out. So that's what Bob Hoover told me when I was at Oshkosh. He goes, if your wing locker opens up, get out. So Noted. I was a little yeah. spooky. So that's right where the top of the locks are okay. there on the side. So everyone always wants to know what makes the Mustang whistle. So if you can see the gun ports here. So no, not dissimilar. Everyone thinks it's the scoop or the oil, oil door up there. It's not. It's actually the Coke bottle effect. So when you're a kid and you take a Coke bottle or maybe rain, you do it as an adult. I'm yeah, sure. that's, yeah, that's how you, it's an average day. Yeah. Um, which is pretty cool. Um, trying to think, uh, you know, the prop is pretty cool. The reason I like talking about the prop on a Mustang is this has a standard four bladed prop, but it doesn't have what's called a cuff bladed prop. So in some P 51s, you'll have a piece of, um, you'll have about 12 inches, uh, that'll come down away from the spinner. And that cuff right there would actually get you an extra couple, three or four knots down the wing route of the no airplane. Kidding. So if you think about being in a high alpha and you're trying to get G and get your guns on somebody, that extra cuff right there, giving you two or three extra knots would prevent the stall. Cause we all know a stall goes from the wing route, uh, all the way out to the tip, right? Yeah. So if you have three or four extra knots on your enemy, you might get guns on them a little faster. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, I'm trying to think some other really cool parts. How long do, do you, uh, how long do those props last? You have to change them every so yeah, often. About right? once every seven years, you've got to okay. do a major STC on the prop. I'm not a mechanic, so I'm yeah. probably saying something that one of your listeners is going to be like, it's not every seven years, yeah. it's five. <laughs> right. And uh, I'm sure I'll get some hate mail for that. But yeah, you have to take the prop off every couple of years and do a full-blown inspection okay. on it. Yeah, I don't know. I just yeah, fly, so. fly things and break them, you know? Yeah, this is the money maker up here. This is where all the expense of the airplane is, is up in these, uh, you've got the top end of the motor, obviously, and then the bottom end, right? So you got the heads and banks up there, in the V12, you know, liquid cooled. And you can see all these big, these big tubes up here. This is the, the coolant or what's known as the header tank, right? So the header tank is taking that coolant and circulating it down through the radiator where it's being air cooled through the scoop. So down here, so the airflow is going in there and the radiator is then cooling that, um, all that, uh, all that coolant to cycle it back up to keep the engine, uh, nice and cool. So you got an air cooled, liquid cooled process. So saying is you lose the radiator, you lose the coolant, uh, you lose the engine, you lose the airplane. So no bueno. Not where you want to be in life. No, not in this thing. Um, remarkably though, um, and having done a bunch of training, I hope this never happens in real life, but um, this airplane will glide fabulously if you get the prop back. So um, you know what it, the glide it, ratio is or like you have a rough. Yeah, it's about 14, right around 14 to one. 
So okay. it's, it's actually, if you get the prop back, now you keep the prop forward and you lose the motor, you're go, you know, you point at your toes. That's where you're going. Yeah. As you're trying to maintain, you know, you're trying to maintain speed, but fly, fly right it's amazing. Crash, right? Lee, louder back. Um, we've done some, you know, no kidding, full blown, um, engine out, obviously very high altitude and you, right. you pull that prop back and that, that plane goes from here and just levels right out. And it's not bad. You know, it's, it's not bad. It's 10, 14 to one. Um, that's, that's kind of a good rule of thumb. It's better than the Viper, you know, a one to yeah, one. Yeah. What's the Viper? You, rough rule of thumb is you use one to one. So, you know, 10,000 feet, you can go 10 miles. I think it was actually like seven to five, you know, some ratio in there, but yeah, you know, you're not worried about prop being flat. You got to make sure you get the stores off the jet, which pretty much everything can be jettisoned, you know? So barring you not jettisoning, then you've got a fighting chance. The one that weird, like, I don't know if you do, uh, would consider doing a IMC force landing or getting out. That's the one that's always up for debate in the Viper. And you practice it, I would say infrequently, but like I say, you know, Shaw hometown, home field advantage, you know, the terrain, it's relatively flat. Highest thing is going to be a cell phone tower. Some guys say you need 2000 feet or 2,500 feet or 3000 feet of a cloud deck in order to shoot an IMC for, you know, SFO, be able to break out, realize you're in a position to land and land or not, and still be above min ejection, which is 2000 AGL. So I don't know. It'd be, there's some, there's some sporty, uh, there's some sporty stories out there. There's a good video out there on YouTube. It's a DC guard guy who lost his motor and takes into Elizabeth city. I think it's like 15 years old, but yeah, I've watched it, that like a thousand yeah, times. It's an incredible teamwork. Like if you talk about single, you know, you're flying a Mustang. There's only you in there, right? Flying a Viper. There's only one guy or gal in there, but there's still crew resource management and teamwork that's going back and forth. And that's the thing too. I know we talked about it a little bit in the podcast, like that interoperability, which yeah, that's, that's the thread there, but being able to speak the same language and back one another up and kind of help one another, whether it be taking the radios or vice versa, doing as much as you can there. But that, that video, again, that's another one that I've shared on, on Instagram, but share it again. Cause it's the four ship and you got number four who loses his motor and it's tremendous teamwork for that guy to get the jet on the ground. I don't know. Yeah. Viper has decent glide ratio. That's right. Yeah. Well, I think if I'm an IMC and a P 51, um, you know, and, uh, shooting an approach in this thing down to, you know, 2000 over, I mean, I think I'll just take the 1911 and just pull the, pull the trigger. I mean, <laughs> and be done. you know, I should not be in that situation in this airplane. Um, but yeah, I mean, that is a big one over out over the water in this airplane. It's don't ditch. I mean, really? there's, it's, it's really unforgiving. It, I mean, the book says do not ditch, like basically just get out. Jeez. So I think at the point I'm engine out and it's, you know, 500, 800 overcast. I'm just, I'm just getting out. I mean, I'm just going to take my chances. I'm not going to try and go shoot an approach engine out in a P 51. I mean, hey. And if I'm ever in that situation, I, I don't, you know, yeah. You know, the war's over for me. You know, I don't, <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to do that. <laughs> it shouldn't be there. Well, you know, the, our saying is just give it back to the taxpayers. That's what we always say. But I guess right. in this case, like, it's a little painful. That's one of those things. Like, I don't know. Things things can happen, but doing the training, being prepared, and then obviously not painting yourself in a corner or setting yourself up. Like, you're not going to go fly on a bad weather day. You know, but no. not saying, you know, deck couldn't roll in or something crazy. No, I mean, I've had rain coming through the canopy. I've been an IMC and a P-51. I've stripped the paint off the leading edge of my wing. I mean, I've done it. I haven't gone down to minimums in a P-51, but I've been through some gnarly weather. I just am like, I, I just don't want to do that again, number one. Right. And number two, I'd like uh, just trying to avoid that entire wrap, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but that's the that's the downside of a single single engine single seat fighter, right? You got to accept the consequences and know what you're operating. Yeah, you know. Yeah, someone's got to do it. You know, might as well be that's you. That's right. You know, so someone's got to do it. Well, speaking of which, I know you got to go out there and uh, do exactly that. So, hope you have a safe flight. Go tear it up. Yeah, we're gonna tear it up. We'll uh, save a little for you. Don't yeah. worry for yeah. your yeah. listeners. Hey, Thanks. I really appreciate what you do with the uh, with uh, the Aquaburn podcast. It's great to be on. I hope. Uh, I hope it didn't bore your, uh, your clientele and your, uh, your, uh, listeners too much. I'm looking forward to listening to it as well. So I can hear how bad I am on, uh, on radio. <laughs> I always say this, you know, the, uh, I appreciate you taking the time. I, people are going to love it. 
But the worst part of this is I have to go listen to it and edit it. And I hate listening to my voice. So if you want to like really just like grind the gears is start a podcast and then edit yourself when you hate your voice. So now you sound good. I think that's going to be me that hears it for the first time. It's like, ah, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> this is so bad. Yeah. So. No, I enjoyed yeah, it. Awesome. Thanks, Andrew, man. I really appreciate it. Hey, Rain, you're the best, man. Thanks.